What's up guys, Rob Sandals here. How are you doing? I hope you guys are well. Welcome to another video. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the three questions I get asked the most. I get loads of messages via Twitter, Instagram, people comment on my videos. There are three questions that I get asked more than anything else. And today, we're gonna to answer those. It's gonna be a great video, let's go. Before we get into answering these three big questions, guys, I'm going to ask you to do two things for me. Firstly, please go hit that thumbs up button. Hit the like on the video. It's going to be a good one. I'm taking the time to answer these three questions for you guys. So please, all I ask in return is that you go hit that like button just below us right now. If you're new to the channel, please do think about subscribing. If you haven't already, you definitely should. We've got loads of other videos coming on the channel. Loads of videos already on the channel as well that you can go and check out. So please do think about subscribing if you haven't already. Now, most of these questions we're going to look at today have come through my other social media channels outside of YouTube. Probably the place I get asked questions the most is over on my Instagram page. Um, please go check those out if you haven't already. The main one for the sports photography stuff that we're going to talk about today is the at Rob Samble Sport, which I'm putting on the screen right now. Got two other channels as well. There's the at Scorchers Photographer, basketball specific. And thirdly, is at Rob Samble's photo. That's actually more travel landscape based. So go check those three out. That's the place where I probably have the most interaction actually with you guys. I always try and read the comments and comment to everything or, or reply to everything on the videos below. But Instagram is definitely a place where we get the most um, interaction over there. So please do go check those out. You can find me on Twitter using that at Rob Samble's photo as well. So without further ado, let's look at these top three questions that I'm getting asked all the time and I am going to try and answer them for you guys right now. Probably the question I get asked, maybe not the maybe joint the most, is how do I get started in professional sports photography? Now, the, the way to answer that question, first of all, I'll tell you my journey um, and then I'll talk about how you guys can go about it. The thing that people I think always struggle with or the thing that perhaps people don't like is that it can take a while uh, because you need to build up a portfolio of good images. Now, look, I'll be the first to admit my journey through that process was perhaps a bit quicker than most and maybe I got, um, got lucky with a couple of people I knew and stuff like that. But actually, you know, I'd like to think that every Every step I, I took was because I'd merited that step through doing a hell of a lot of hard work along the way. So my personal journey was I started taking photographs of basketball. Um, I play basketball, I'm a big basketball fan, and I started taking photos of basketball. That was just a local team um, down in the Surrey League near where I live. Um, you know, no, not professional team at all, just a local team where I knew some guys. I said, hey, come on, can I come along and take some photos? They said, yeah, of course you can. And I went and took some photos. Um, I also went to a local university um, and then another university as well, one I used to go to and, and then another one local to me. And I asked them if I could just take some photos of their sports team, of their, their basketball team. And in return, I'd give them a couple of the photos and they said, yeah, cool, come on down. So that's what I did. Um, and I did that lots. And, I, and I, I'd taken hundreds of images doing that. Um, and I collected together, you know, some some decent ones. I then went down to my local professional basketball team. At the time, it was a team called Surrey United. That's now Surrey Scorchers, who I work for. Um, and I asked them, well, I could go take some photos. And they said, yeah, sure. So I went down there and I took some photos. Um, I only went probably one or two times because I didn't want to, you know, take the mic turning up there too often. Um, so I just got a few photos. And, and from there, I built a, a good portfolio where I had probably eight um, images, these were basketball I should say at this time, eight images that I was really pleased with, um, that I felt were decent quality, um, you know, nice sharp in focus, um, decent action shots. Uh, from there, I went out and I started contacting other professional basketball teams and actually did a little bit of work just doing a few games um, of another team in the BBL, not Surrey Scorchers, a London based team, where I went and did sort of two, three games um, taking some photographs. Um, that was cool. It worked out. But what it enabled me to do was build that portfolio further. I had some different teams in the photos, a different arena, which varied that portfolio, and made it a little bit better. 
I then started putting those photos all over the place. Um, I was careful. I never put anything bad, or, or at least what I felt was bad. Um, I probably have posted some bad photos, but I tried not to on social media, and I started to tag the relevant BBL teams in them. I didn't go crazy. You, you never would have seen from me a gallery of 100 images like you will see a lot of photographers do, because I felt that that was almost detrimental to the work. I just tried to pick my best, best photos, and I posted those in a few different places. Lo and behold, not too long after that, um, Surrey United was the team at the time, contacted me and said, hey, we've seen some of your photos, you know, we love them, would you come and take some photos for us properly? Um, and that was my first kind of fully paid professional photography, sports photography job that I did. I went along there, um, did a few kind of trial games. Surrey United, the team actually then disbanded, but then Surrey Scorchers was created. Um, and long story short, I, I took over and became the club photographer for, for them and and I've been doing that since so basketball look, that's how I started Alongside that, I was doing exactly the same process um, later on because, hey, look, I love the basketball and that's what I started doing. I then started taking photographs of football, exactly the same, a local team to me in Surrey, based near Guildford. Went along there, took some photos um, and I created a portfolio of probably eight to ten football related photos. My strongest portfolio was basketball and by this stage it was growing and I felt it was a pretty decent portfolio of images. In fact, you know what? Let me, I'm going to put into the video right now some of those original basketball photos that I had in my first um, portfolio. I'm going to look at some of those images now and, and cringe a bit and think, oh, those aren't good enough for a portfolio. But hey, th that's what I had at the time. So let me share some of those images. I'll put those into the video right now. So there you go. That's the images that I was originally using and circulating to try um, to gain some interest in my photography. So alongside that, I was getting these football images together. Uh, then there was a friend of mine, actually a guy who I knew through the basketball team, who was doing some work with Fulham Football Club with their academy, um, some non-football stuff. He was teaching them, you know, like life skills and stuff, maths, English, those kinds of things. And they said they needed someone to go take some photos of their academy games. And I was like, yep, yeah, straight away, I'll come down. I'll do that, no problem. Um, I went along, just did that for them. Um, I think kind of twice maybe I did that for them. And that then has slowly developed into me being kind of one that would do, you know, not the only one, but one of the Fulham Academy photographers. From there, I was able to build, you know, a decent, real good quality um, football portfolio. So I had some decent footballs of photos, uh, some decent photos of football, I should say. From there, um, I started going out and I started being more on social media. I started making these videos, um, going way back to my original videos. And I started just generally to promote myself a little bit better. And it wasn't too long after that that I started um, working for a photo agency called Epic Action. Um, not doing football initially, doing like running events and obstacle courses and those kind of things. Uh, and again, that strengthened and grew my portfolio. I still work for them now and I do some football work for them now too. And then I started working for a, an actual sports photography agency doing football. It wasn't frozen in motion to start with. I did a little bit of work with UK Sports Picks. That was more basketball stuff. Um, and then I moved and I'm working with frozen in motion. And I have been ever since doing football because I like working for them, really. Um, so that's that's what I do. And that's my personal journey for how I got into it. So look, in real simple terms, how do you get into it? You have to get out there. Don't be precious about what level of sports you're trying to shoot. And we're going to talk about that in the second question. But you just need to get together probably eight images, eight to ten images that you think are really, really good. Now, that doesn't mean go photograph a game and get the best ten images from that game because chances are that isn't going to be good enough. You need to go out there, shoot ten games, twenty games, thirty games, fifty games, a hundred games and get the best, best, best eight to ten photos that you would deem worthy enough to be in your portfolio. If you're wondering what makes a decent sort of photography image or what qualifies for a portfolio, do exactly what I did. Get out there on Instagram. Look at sports photographers. What kind of work are they posting? Chances are they're going to be posting their best work. 
And that might give you a bit of inspiration and a bit of an idea um, as to what goes towards eight to 10 images. Once you've got that portfolio, you go out there and you put it in front of anybody and everyone who will take a look at it. The more people who look at it, the more people are going to know about your work and the more chance you will have of getting picked up by an agency or something else. Okay, enough about that. Let's talk about question two. Now, question two is probably perhaps the one I get asked the most, and that is how do I get into bigger professional events? How do I get accreditation to get into events? And the answers are, guys, honestly, the answers are you have to earn it. You're not just going to like, there's not like a secret website that we're not telling you about where you can go along and get accreditation and rock up to a Premier League game. They don't let anyone in, right? You have to, you have to have earned your place to be there. Now, the way you get into events is you start at lower end events. If you go right now to, to try to shoot like a Premier League team, you have to have a Datico license or you have to be working for somebody who has a Datico license, like an agency. You can't just fill in a form and get yourself a Datico license. For example, I can't get one right now. I work for an agency and, and, and I operate under their license. If you come down to championship, it's the same. And in fact, all of the football league, um, you know, league one, league two, league three, the same. If you want to just turn up as like a freelance photographer, you have to have a, um, a data co license to be able to do that. And so unless you have one of those or somebody is willing to, to give you a job or, or send you to represent them at that event, chances are you're not going to get into those um by a means of having your own license. So what do you do? You come further down the chain. You look at the Football National League. It used to be called the Vanarama National League. It might be called something else now. You look at local teams, Sunday League. A Sunday League team does not have any kind of accreditation or license process. Chances are you're going to look on someone's website, on their Twitter, contact them, say, hey, can I come down and take some photos? They're probably going to say yes, especially if you say, hey, I'll give you a couple of the photos afterwards. They're not going to pay you. You're not going to be able to sell them to a newspaper, but it gives you a chance to go photograph some football or, or whatever kind of sport you're trying to photograph, and you can build a portfolio. Other sports um, operate exactly the same, even like basketball. It's a lower level sport in this country. It's much, much easier to get the accreditation, but they won't just give it to anybody. You have to be able to prove that you're there to take images, to you know work for somebody or, or promote to a, um, to a newspaper outlet. But the lesser sports, as in, you know, if you're looking at the big ones, like, you know, the, uh, I don't know, the Formula One, the, the football, the, the international rugby, the Olympics, those ones are going to be so so hard to get into and and my advice is if you're starting out forget about trying to get into them don't worry about that get into what you can apply to the lesser sports go out there and you know if you're in the uk look at things like the basketball um the american football uh the the ice hockey the the netball to a certain extent you know the sports which are a bit smaller you will have more chance of being able to get into those kind of events so that you can grow your portfolio if you're in the us i would imagine it's the same um probably the other way around for you guys rugby for example i imagine is smaller you're going to have more chance of getting into that type of event to go and take some photos um if you go and rock up to the nba or the nfl you're not just going to be able to fill in the form and, and turn up to a game the only other way you can get into some of these events is if you work for a team um, and I've met some people actually I've met some of you guys who watch my channel and um, when I've been out and about at games and and you're there because you're working for the club and sometimes you get lucky right you might be working for a league two club who who draw a premier league club or a championship club in in the the cup or something and then suddenly you're there you're at a premier league stadium and you're photographing the game so awesome if that happens great and a great great chance to get some really cool images um, of some big teams and some big players is. And last but certainly not least, question number three that I get asked the most is a very general question and you guys probably get frustrated because I always really struggle to answer it. But the question is, hey, which camera should I buy next or which lens should I buy next? I'm looking for a 300mm lens, you know, which one would you recommend? I'm looking at a 70-200, to 200, but should I buy the Sigma or the Canon or the Tamron? And, and the answer is always the same you should buy the best best possible lens that you can so long as it's within your budget if you've got the budget and you're out there looking for a 70 to 200 and you can afford the brand new canon 70 to 200 f 2.8 is mark 3 
great go and buy it because that's the best possible lens you can get if your budget will only allow you as far as buying a used sigma 7200 on ebay then then buy that lens don't think anything more about it don't worry about your lens compared to someone else's buy that lens and get out there and take a load of photos and try to build that portfolio exactly like we talked about when I went out there and I was taking those basketball images, and in fact, every single one of those images you saw earlier, the basketball videos, every single one of them was taken with this lens. That is the, the Canon 50mm f1.8. You can buy this for about £100. Um, and that is what I built my entire professional basketball portfolio with, with a £100 lens. Same with cameras. If you can go and afford the brand new 1DX Mark II or the Mark III coming out soon, awesome. Go buy two of them, buy three of them, four of them, set up some remote cameras. If you can't, you buy whatever you can. Maybe it's a, you know, a, a, a Canon 7D Mark I used on eBay for a couple of hundred quid. You buy that and you just work with what you got, right? Don't worry too much about the gear. I certainly made that mistake in the past. That isn't going to make you a better photographer. The practice and the practice and the practice is what is going to make you better. The gear certainly helps, but don't worry about the gear until you get to a stage where you can afford the gear. The better you get, the more photography you will do. Maybe you start to make a bit of money. You grow and you can upgrade your gear gradually. That's what I've done. I've upgraded my gear gradually, 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 one step at a time until I have the gear that I use now. Anyway, guys, enough banging on from me. I feel like I've just sat here and talked to you today, but hey, that's kind of how you answer questions, right? So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found those three questions useful. Thank you very much for watching. Please, please do not forget to hit that thumbs up button, like the video. That way, where'd I go? No, it's this way. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'm going to see you guys real soon on the next video. Thank you for watching.